So hi, Blanca, can you uh, present yourself and tell us what it is you do? Yeah, hello. So I am Blanca and I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Nottingham, working on a project about supporting people with multiple sclerosis to remain at work. Uh, my background is in psychology and I have been working with people with multiple sclerosis for the last seven or eight years, more or less, in different areas. So today we are talking about a study that you've been doing, uh, which is called the Preventing Job Loss for uh, People with Multiple Sclerosis, I believe. Um, could you tell us what was the aim of this project and, and how it will actually benefit people with MS? So to begin with, before this study, um, so the idea of this study came across because uh, during my PhD, I work on the development implementation and evaluation of a job retention intervention to help people with multiple sclerosis to remain at work. Uh, so during these those three years, I worked towards developing a, a program to help people with MS at work and their employers. And because of the pandemic and other circumstances, we tested this intervention in a community setting, which basically means outside of a hospital. Um, however, we believe that people with MS um, receive, first of all, people with MS are diagnosed in a hospital, and also um, they attend their healthcare appointments routinely in a hospital. So we thought that it would be best to understand how this sort of program can fit within existing healthcare services. And throughout the intervention, we saw that it was quite positive, the experiences of the developing this support and the participants who were included reported some benefits. And in fact, the intervention was associated with improved goal attainment. So then we apply for funding for this uh, project, which is funded by the MS Society. And the aim is to redesign this program I developed during my PhD and to test how it can fit within existing NHS services. And we want to develop an implementation plan, basically a blueprint, blueprint of how this program can be modified and implemented in other healthcare settings. So for example, to be delivered by a GP or delivered by an MS nurse within the MS clinic. And the program focuses on helping the person with MS and their employer to, to manage their symptoms, improve their relationships at work, being able to disclose your condition or have a conversation about the issues that you are experiencing at work and how to identify and request a reasonable adjustments, which are modifications to your role or environment to help you perform better at work. And in terms of how it can help people with MS, we are at quite an early stage of the research, but the idea is that understanding how this sort of support can be implemented within the NHS may help us improve and increase the viability of NHS services that provide support with employment for people with MS. And I guess because we've seen over the years that there are a lot of people with MS that do leave work for, for various reasons. So I think this is clearly a very important subject to, to look at. Um, so um, why did you decide to do this study? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, um, I've been working with people with MS for, for a few years now, and I've been working on areas such as um, understanding the neuropsychology of MS, or especially how uh, cognitive or attention problems can have an impact on a person. I also work on uh, language difficulties, so problems with word finding difficulties. And a recurrent topic was the fact that people were mentioning, oh, yes, I'm having this problem. It affects me at, at work. I get quite nervous when I'm in a meeting and I don't know how to say the word that I want to say. So it was clear that it's true, it's important to understand the symptoms and how they affect the person. But a key aspect that seems to be neglected is how people are managing their MS at work. And we know that I think it's only 36% of people with MS in the UK are employed. People are diagnosed when they are very young, between 20 to 40 years of age, which are the prime working years of an adult. And there are few vocational rehabilitation services for people with MS in the UK. In fact, I, there is only ability to provide support for 10% of the population in these software services. So we believe that 
it's important to pay attention to this sort of support and see how we can extend their professional lives of people with MS because it can have good outcomes, not only job retention, but also being more independent, improve quality of life, using fewer healthcare resources. So it's certainly a quite a important area of an adult to, to be able to work on it. How would it work in practice? Say, for instance, if I would come to a clinic and I would have issues with work, how, how would it sort of be put into practice um, to help? We have a structure of the intervention and we are trying to see how it fit, how it will fit in the NHS. The preliminary idea will be that when a person is being diagnosed with MS or having a relapse or just attending the, the yearly appointment at the hospital to discuss their MS, we want the health and care professionals to be able to ask the person about their work. So are you at work, but not just are you employed? We want to help the person reflect about the, oh, it's maybe it's possible that MS may be affecting me at work or I'm a bit nervous about what is happening or these difficulties I'm experiencing. And when a person reports this sort of difficulty, the idea will be first we conduct an initial assessment it should be approximately one hour, and we just want to understand your personal circumstances, employment characteristics, and MS characteristics as well. So we know each person with MS is very different. There's not two people who are the same, but also there are not two jobs that are the same. It's quite difficult to have the same role and responsibilities. So we really want to get a good picture or who are you? What are your preferences? What do you want to do in the long term? Is it you want to reduce your working hours? You may want to move to a job with fewer responsibilities or you want to remain exactly where you are. It's just you may need a little bit of help and helping your line manager understand your, your MS, for example. So this initial assessment will give us an idea of your circumstances and barriers to job retention. So what we think are these aspects that might make it difficult for you to remain at work. And for some people, it's as simple as transport to work. They might have to travel an hour, an hour and a half by public transport and you reach the word fatigue. So what can we do to remove the strain of the transport to work so that when you reach to the workplace, you're actually full of energy to be able to perform your role? And all of this information will be gathered in an initial assessment. And then we will set three goals together to understand what you want to achieve. So this is individually tailored. This is personalized to each person. And we want this program to help you achieve your goals as opposed to what we think you should do. So these three goals should be able, should be realistic and we would like to achieve them during, during the time of the intervention. And following this assessment, the idea will be to receive support and the previous study that we did, people could receive between one to 10 hours of support over three months. And the support will be on the topics that you want to address based on what we saw in the initial assessment. So it's not generic information or giving you a booklet that may be sometimes quite difficult to understand and you may not relate to. So it will be more a conversation about your personal circumstances, what you find difficult, what can you do to manage cognition? What can you do to manage fatigue? What are your legal rights? Should we do some role playing about how you are going to tell your line manager or your colleagues that you have MS? And especially, what do you want to share about your MS? You don't need to say everything. So what are those aspects that are important to share? And during the three months intervention, we will work together to understand and you can receive support as needed. There's nothing fixed in terms of minimum. You need to receive certain amount of hours. And now in this study, we are working to see how this support can be extended and group into different levels according to the intensity of the problem that the person is experiencing. One thing I really liked what you said was also that you could get maybe your line manager involved. Um, how would that work in practice? In practice, it will be uh, in the initial assessment, we will ask you how is your relationship with your line manager? We know that including the line manager in these sort of programs is actually quite important because it helps to improve workplace relationships but also if you need an accommodation at work, if you need a change in your schedule or maybe a printer by your desk, having your line manager involved in these conversations and helping them understand the legal responsibilities is very important. So the idea will be 
understand how is your relationship and whether you will be keen to include the employer in the in the intervention. We could organize uh, meetings that are your line manager or an HR representative according to what you feel most comfortable with and have discussions about what are the difficulties at work, how can this be overcome, give information based on the assessment. If you provide this sort of accommodations, it can be useful to overcome these, these difficulties. Now, not everyone is happy to include the employer because it's quite a sensitive topic, it's your work. And if you are experiencing difficult relationships, you may not want to do that. So the other area that we do is we empower the person with MS by doing, I call it indirect employer engagement, basically means we work together to prepare the person for conversations with the employer. So if you are going to face a meeting with, a, with your employer about poor performance at work, trying to think on the arguments about what it is, what's happening, how can you overcome that? And that will be a way of not including the employer, but empowering the person to have those conversations on their own. Whereabouts are you now in the study? So what's your timeline? Because you, you pretty much just started, haven't you? Yeah, so we are uh, seven months in and it's a 24 months project. Uh, we are about to start recruitment at Nottingham and Derby for to deliver the intervention by an experienced occupational therapist um, who will be who has been trained to deliver this program within existing NHS services and understand which barriers we are going to find. Because when we did the first study, it was myself delivering the intervention as part of my PhD. So that was my full-time role. But again, implementing this in the NHS, there might be some barriers in terms of time, um, resources, funding. And um, at the same time, we are conducting some, uh, it's a realist review. It's a complex way to explore the literature and understand previous studies that have implemented these sort of programs to help people with MS at work that have been done in the NHS and see the problems they face and how we can take their lessons into our study to avoid making those those errors or at least see them see them in advance. So we are about to start the recruitment for for that study and it should run until end of 2023, I believe. And if you're watching this and you're sort of in the Nottingham and Derby area, um, is there any way that they can get involved uh, talking to you? Yes, absolutely. So we are running different studies. Um, for We have a study with interviews to explore your um, experiences with the NHS and see how, how there are different services that you access and how you think it could work best. So we are looking still for participants for interviews. Um, I can share my email address for these, for people who may want to be contacted uh, for, for the interviews. And then the other study with where we will deliver the intervention, it will have to be people receiving healthcare services in the NHS at Nottingham University Hospital or at uh, Derby Hospital. So the, the recruitment is a little bit tighter, but if, uh, if we can always look into things about who could be suitable participants for the study. For the initial interviews, you, you can be anywhere in the UK. Anywhere in the UK, absolutely. And employ, and employ. You can tell your line manager or healthcare professional, we are looking for a wide range of participants because we need to incorporate the views of all relevant stakeholders into this support. You said that once the study is over, when are you sort of hoping to start being able to implement this? In the NHS? Yes. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not know. Um, we This study is quite an early study. It's a feasibility study to explore how the program can be implemented within the NHS. Um, I honestly don't know what sort of barriers we are going to find. I foresee some of them, uh, but this is quite a small study. We are looking to recruit 20 people with MS. But after this study, we want to develop a plan so that it can be implemented in more sites. So hopefully in the next couple of years, we can be running this study in multiple centers across the UK. So that will be the next stage, but we, we are still in very early stages of developing the program and refining it still uh, based on our experiences with the research.
we will share all the contact details um, in the, the comments below of, for this video. And if you want to get involved, um, I think it sounds like a really exciting project because we, we think it's really important subject how to try and keep people uh, with them as in work if they want to stay in work and help them in any way. Um, so good luck to you. <laughs> and uh, Thank keep, you us, keep in touch. Let us know how you're getting on. Absolutely. I will certainly keep in touch. Thank you very much for everything. <laughs> Thank you.